right, uh, first thing on the agenda tonight is a sign permit. Uh, sign design, Wild Divinity Yoga. It's 145 South Main Street. Um, you could speak about this, Stephen. Sure, Mr. Chairman, I, um, I attempted to reach the applicant so I could clarify some things, and I haven't heard back. Mostly just want to understand where the second sign location is per the application, the dimensions, and what colors are used. It's also unclear whether they'll be applying for some kind of a electrical permit. So my recommendation would be to continue this to the February 12th meeting, if it's the pleasure of the board. Sure, that, that sounds good to me, if there's nobody here. And we don't have to vote on that. Oh, Hi there, oh, applicant. How are you? Well, oh, <laughs> good okay. to see you. Well, come on up then. We're sorry, we didn't know that uh, anyone was here tonight. My name's Mary Wilson. If you could just sit, you could if you could sit and uh, and use the microphone, please. Sure. Thank you. My name's Mary Wilson. I'm the owner of Wild Divinity Yoga. I wasn't. I didn't receive any messages, so I apologize. Okay. Oh, uh, so Stephen, did you have any? Um, did, were you able to review this? I, I was particularly concerned, Mary, with, um, oh, are you are you intending to light the signs by the, on the building or in the pylon? No. Okay. And um, are you, you planning to use more than three colors? No. What, do you know, what, what is the color scheme or sequence? Uh, teal, purple, and white. Okay, great. Um, well, frankly, Mr. Chairman, the dimensions certainly checked out. I don't have the dimensions for the second pylon sign. Um, I believe it's 2 by 24. 2 by 24? I um, think so. We can always condition it. Yeah, we can, we can condition it, Mr. Chairman. So I can work with the applicant to make sure that it's conforming to the to the zoning bylaws. If it's the pleasure of the board to vote in favor of this, it does seem that it's otherwise compliant. Sure. Um, do you want us to tell, tell us about the, the business? Sure. Um, we are opening a yoga studio and retail location. So we've taken two of the retail um, areas, and we're having one side for a classroom. Uh, we're hoping to be able to have classes for up to 20 people. And then the other side will sell retail products pertaining to yoga. Yeah, where is 145 South Main Street? What building is that? It's um, where the Little Red Smokehouse is. Oh, okay. It's going to be, um, there's a Little Red Smokehouse, the vape shop, and then us. Oh, very nice. I'm very excited. Mr. Chair, through you. What's your hours of operation that you're thinking about having? A little, just a little, little time, so that way you can talk about your business. Um, where you're going to be new, what your hours of operation would be, so that way people can come and find you. Sure. Well, we will be doing some advertising campaigns. Hopefully, that will um, that will clarify that. Um, we'll have classes in early morning. Uh, there is a daycare center in the building as well, so we're hoping to to offer classes um, around the, the drop-off times and the pickup times for um, families to make it convenient for them. We'll have classes midday as well. Um, we have a large senior population in Carver. We're hoping to offer community classes for them. Um, and, and midday has been a big request. We've had um, requests for classes that would start somewhere around 4 o'clock for people that are working that 7 to 3 shift so they don't have to go home, get settled, and then come back out for a 6 or 7 o'clock class. So we are hoping to have four to five classes a day. Beautiful. But I do hope to be home in bed by eight. <laughs> <laughs> right there with so you. do we tonight. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I just want to say welcome. Um, I'm so excited to see this. I think this is totally the type of business that Carver needs, and I really hope you have a lot of success. Thank you very much. I hope to see you on the map. You might. <laughs> <laughs> Vinyasa? Yes. All right. Any, any other planning board members have any other questions, comments? Sounds great. Yeah. We're not sure when exactly we're opening, but when we do, our first week will be free. So we hope that you can all come in and, and at least try a class. That's way too hard. No. <laughs> and they're way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do the gentle yoga. Well, Ooh, gentle yoga. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the sign for Wild Divinity Inc. Um, with the following conditions. There will be a uh, building permit for the sign. The colors will be teal, purple, and white. Um, there'll be no lighting, and the other other sign will be worked out to meet our standards with the uh, with the director. So that's my motion. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. All right. 
Thank okay. you and yeah, good Mary, luck. Before you. you leave, can I ask you to confirm the number that's on the application so I can call you tomorrow? Is that okay? Sure. All right, next we have an approval. Uh, we have several approval not required plans. And the first one is uh, Helen Casoli, Snappet Street. This was uh, map 35, lot four. And we're here for a discussion and possible vote this evening. Good evening. Good to see you again. Thanks so much. Likewise, on my side, um, Bill Madden from GAF Engineering here on behalf of Helen Consoli. Um, it was, do you want me to wait for no. Stephen to come back? Um, I was here a couple of weeks ago when we submitted the plans, had just a brief discussion on what we we're attempting to do. Um, essentially, it's the same plan that we presented. It is the same plan that we presented um, two weeks ago. It's desired by Mrs. Casoli to uh, divide the property into um, to three lots. One is the existing cranberry acreage that's off of High Street. The, uh, the other lot is for an existing structure that's located at 111 High Street. And the third lot is uh, just would be a vacant lot um, with no structures or cranberry facilities located on it off of Snappet Road that would likely likely be for sale. Each, each lot meets the um, requisite requirements for frontage and area and what have you. And um, it's pretty much um, very straightforward for me plan. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, we looked at this uh, at our last meeting and uh, Stephen didn't have a chance to look at it. Have you had a chance since then, Stephen? I, I did, Mr. Chairman, and I had an opportunity also to speak with Jesse Boyle from the fire department. Why that's important, we typically don't share these things with the fire department as they are approval not required. However, in our zoning bylaws, it does specify that lot shape shall mean lots that are so distorted in configuration as to be detrimental to public health, safety, welfare, or convenience, even though complying with the dimensional requirements established therein. Uh, just given the peculiar shape of the lot, I just wanted to make certain that the fire department was not only able to contribute their thoughts, but also become aware with what the access points are off of High Street in the unlikely and unfortunate event that they might have to be called to the site. Uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. Boyle, but I understand that this does does seem to allay any concerns that the public safety offices might have. All right. Any other questions by uh, any of the board members? Mr. Chair, through you. Mm -hmm. um, my only concern was the lot shape and making sure that there was access for the fire department and public safety. And I believe that um, Stephen has addressed that with the fire department, so I'm okay with it. All right, so uh, if there are no other questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to en endorse the, um, the uh, Form A for Helen Casoli. Second that. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. so much for your time. Appreciate it. The next is uh, Borrego Solar Systems for property located off of Charlotte Furnace Road. We have a discussion possible vote this evening. I put the little plan at your spot, the Mylar. I just had it, didn't I? What's that? Um, for the record, Sarah, yes, thank you. For the record, Sarah Stearns with Fields and Thomas and Zach Park is from Borrego Solar. Um, <laughs> Mr. Cole has a mylar that we discussed um, about a month ago, the hearing before last. Um, and essentially what this is, it's a little bit unique in that this is a Form A plan to be co-signed by, co-endorsed by both the Wareham Planning Board as well as um, the Carver Planning Board for a completely different solar project that um, we had worked on with Borrego entirely located in Wareham um, but essentially to meet the um, required setbacks for the Wareham zoning bylaw a small sliver of land just over the Carver Wareham town line was required so um, it's really quite straightforward. It's a very small strip of land that we're requesting endorsement for, um, as well as the Wareham board. The, the reason we hadn't discussed it fully the first night we brought it to, the, to your attention was that the 
Mylar was still with the Wareham Planning Board. They did in fully endorse it at their last hearing, so now we have it uh, for you as well. So I looked at this with uh, Sarah, and it's just a small portion of land that's in Cava, just a little rectangular piece. Um, most of it's in Wareham. So it's uh, not, uh, so it, it should it should be uh, a simple simple thing for us to uh, approve this or endorse. Do you, Mr. Chair, or Sarah? Um, so you, st you said that you're all done with the Wareham Planning Board. They've endorsed the project for you? Um, yes. It appears that only the chairman has signed the Mylar, but um, at the last planning board hearing, it was voted on and fully endorsed by the board. Okay. Any uh, planning board members have any uh, questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to uh, Move. approve the uh, Borrego Solar Systems for Zero Charlotte uh, Furnace Road. I'll second that. So we have a motion second to improve, approve the uh, 4A plan. Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. That's it. Well, thank you. And then we have uh, two other plans uh, that were just uh, in receipt of this evening. Uh, the first one is uh, George L. Thompson, Pleasant Street, uh, which is map 29, lot 9A. So we'll, uh, and those are probably in our packages here. They are, Mr. Chairman. Um, typically we receive plans at one meeting and then we uh, receive and uh, uh, discuss and possible vote at the subsequent meeting. Okay. Uh, planning staff has not viewed those those submissions as yet. Okay. And, and there's nobody here for that particular to represent that plan this evening. All right. So, uh, and then the next we have uh, an RBBP LLC Spring Street map 32 receipt of plans. And that goes to the same. So we'll uh, look at those uh, two plans uh, at our next meeting. Okay, then we have uh, an endorsement of plans. Uh, DHP Realty Trust, uh, 0 South Meadow Road. Could you uh, go over that, Stephen? Sure, Mr. Chairman. We have the applicant in the audience tonight in case there's any follow-up questions, but the board did approve this subdivision site plan and special permit at, uh, was it our last meeting, Sarah? Or the meeting before? We have over here the, uh, the mylars that, my that are intended to be uh, uh, filed at the Registry of Deeds. So with the board's endorsement tonight, I'll ask you to sign those at the end of our meeting so the applicant can file those. And that was the over 55 subdivision that we... 54 units over 55 yeah. restricted townhomes yeah. off of uh, South Meadow. Okay. All right. So next we'll go uh, to uh, the public hearings that we have and uh, that are to be, uh, that were continued. And uh, I'll just say um, a couple of them we're going to... Uh, if you... <coughs> If you want to speak about the application of David Mulcahy, uh, Stephen. Oh, sure. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, there's an administrative impediment presently that I'm trying to solve for. I do believe that if it's the board's wisdom to continue this to the 12th, we'll have that resolved working with the uh, the applicant. I think we might be ready to, uh, to uh, advance the project at that time. Make a motion to continue the public hearing for David Mulcahy to uh, 2 12 19 at 7 o'clock. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, uh, aye. Uh, those against? Okay, that was unanimous. And then the second one, we may have people here tonight. It's uh, on the application of Cranberry Point Energy Storage, LLC, and that uh, is off of 31 Rear Main Street in Carver. And could you t uh, speak about that, Stephen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we opened up the public hearing at our last meeting on this. Uh, we received a, f a full plan set uh, on Thursday this last week. Fuss and O'Neill and the Carver Fire Department are reviewing those. We conducted a site visit this past Monday, and I understand the applicant has met with the CFD to discuss the technology. Frankly, we just need to vet further the submissions that were given to us last Thursday. With Monday being the holiday, we haven't received anything from Fuss and O'Neill as yet. Okay. So that... <coughs> So if there's anyone here this evening for that hearing, 
that will be continued to uh, let's see February twelfth. We good with the twelfth for that seat. I, I believe so. By then, Mr. Chairman, we should have properly vetted the uh, the submissions. Okay, Mr. Chair, do you need a motion to continue that? I'll yes, we do. Yeah. To have that continued to the twelfth. I'll second that motion. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. So anybody here that's for uh, Cranberry Point Energy Storage, which is off of uh, 31R Main Street in Carver, that meeting will be this the meeting will uh, be held on um, the February 12th. So we're not going to hear that tonight. And I see a lot of people came for that this evening. All right, so we'll continue. Okay, so uh, we'll uh, go on to uh, on the application of Borrego Solar Systems Inc. requesting a special permit and site plan uh, review pursuant to sections 3100, 3580, 5300 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw set located at 0 Wareham Street in Carver, Mass., um, which is Assessor's Map 134 4 2 to a large to uh, allow a large-scale uh, ground-mounted solar photovoltaic installation. The proposed project includes a proposed solar array and energy storage facility adjacent to an existing solar array in accordance with the solar bylaw in a residential agricultural district. Good evening. I, uh, gee, it seems like such, such a long time ago that we took a site walk out here. Yes. Um, and this was the the uh, the system that was going to be. See, oh, so this was the one that was next to the landfill and next to an existing. This is the one across the street. Then <laughs> all right, yes. I knew it, across the street, it, it was one of them. Gas lines. Yep. That's what I wrote down here. Okay, across the street. Yeah, this was in the gas line area. Right. So we haven't. Mr. Chairman, here's a photo uh, from that site visit. Just as a reminder. All right. I remember. All right. If you, yeah, we we did go out there. Um, we took a look. As far as I can remember, uh, we went out there. Was a lot of woods. Uh, there weren't any uh, homes around there. That were, and so, um, and I and I believe um, Make Peace owns the properties all around this uh, yes. area. I can give a little recap if that's helpful since it has been a while. Um, again, for the record, Sarah Stearns with Beals and Thomas and with me is Zach Farkas from Borrego Solar and uh, Richard Serkey, the project attorney. Um, we This does go a little bit uh, back. We've been um, continued a few times um, or we've requested continuances a few times to sort out some design changes regarding stormwater management primarily with Fuss and O'Neill. Um, we have received a final memo from Fuss and O'Neill um, citing that any of our um, design changes have been accepted um, by FNO. Um, we did have a site visit uh, December 6th actually it was with this board that's why it feels like a long time ago because it was on a windy day this is um, to reorient you um, the project across the street from the existing solar array and landfill down on Federal Road and the aerial is right behind me <clears throat> it is a wooded site um, but if you recall there are areas of significant dead or dying trees um, along the gas transmission line. Um, the size of the project is approximately 12 and a half megawatts and does include a battery storage um, appurtenance in the center of the array. Um, it does meet the criteria of the solar bylaw and respects all setbacks and screening requirements as well. I think most of the board got to go on the site visit. There were a couple. Did you get to walk on it, Jim? The site visit? No. Okay. Uh, uh, do you have anything to uh, add, um, <coughs> Stephen? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the project does appear to be conforming in all regards to the bylaws, and the applicants stated that they had a closeout memo from uh, Fuss and O'Neill, and I can confirm that that is true. We received it on January 3rd at 4:43 in which Andy Glein states the revised plan set addresses our outstanding comments for Zero Hammond Street. 
I would add too that um, Harbor Fire has reviewed this project and is satisfied with the accessibility um, from Hammond Street off of Federal Road. Uh, any uh, questions or comments uh, by the planning board members? I know you mentioned the natural environment and that some of the trees are, are dying or not looking good, but it's still a really large chunk of land, and I worry about the natural environment because it's, what, between 40 and 50 acres? How, how big is it exactly? Yeah, it's about 40. Yeah, that's just a large chunk of land to, to cut down. Is there a, a plan to put anything else in conservation or, or bring back some trees? I think the conservation plan we've talked about is part of the, the big piece larger portfolio that it's not a specific one for one, but they'll continue to work as they have for years in putting lands in conservation specific to replanting, similar to the Federal Road Project, which the board approved. We have sent a forester out to the site to value the timber on site from a board feet, pulp, and pellet value, and that dollar value will be made available to the town tree fund when that is established for plantings at the town's um, direction. Thank you. Any other board members have any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, if I may? Um, I just want to be clear that in working with Borrego, um, this is not a requirement. It cannot be a requirement or a condition of the special permit, the reforestation. Um, I, I typically don't laud an applicant, but I do want to be mindful of the, um, the the good corporate neighborship of Borrego in this instance. Um, it is not required that they reforest any area where they're cutting down trees. However, they have acknowledged that we have a master plan. One of those elements of our master plan is to preserve our natural environment, and it is through a charitable don donation by Borrego, and I think also make peace, Sarah, uh, for Federal Street at least. Um, I believe it's a combined effort between Borrego and Amy That's, that's my recollection. Uh, uh, they, they have donated this money to the town, recognizing that we, we do and will have a reforestation issue to, to, uh, to address. Um, so I want to thank Borrego for their mindfulness in helping us achieve our master plan objectives. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. Um, is there, uh, did anybody uh, out in the audience have uh, any questions or comments about this uh, particular project? Well, seeing none, um, I think uh, we should probably close the public hearing and then uh, we'll have our conditions at a vote on the conditions uh, at our next meeting. Mr. Chairman, I, I've been attempting to have the conditions and the special permits um, in draft form available at our meetings the night that the board takes a vote. Um, my, my laptop, frankly, is being serviced, and also I think it's worth lending itself to getting the full, complete memos from Fuss and O'Neill so that if there are any elements uh, that are worthy of condition, we can contribute those and make it a more holistic um, condition and permit. Okay. Do you not have the memo from Fuss and O'Neill? I have the email from them. I haven't. I haven't had a chance to print the uh, the final memo. It's it's for the most part, Sarah. It's 196 that I'm more concerned about making sure I have the memo for. But we'll address that later. Mr. Chairman, if uh, if I may just state before you close the public hearing, this is a situation in which the project complies with all of the requirements in the zoning bylaw, and um, the zoning bylaw was adopted pursuant to a vote of town meeting. And so uh, I believe that the petition deserves to be supported. Uh, and um, uh, there, because the, to vote against a petition that complies in all respects with the zoning bylaw requires a very, very good reason, and I don't see one. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close the public hearing for um, zero Wareham Street. A second. So we have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, that was unanimous. So we'll have our, we'll vote on the conditions at our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. And um, all right, so uh, next, <coughs> see, see, no one has moved from their chairs. So. <laughs> the, 
The next is uh, on the agenda is uh, the application of uh, Borrego uh, Solar Systems Inc. requesting a special permit and site plan uh, review pursuant to sections 3100, 3580, and 5300 of the Cava Zoning Bylaw located at 196 Tremont Street, uh, assesses map 125, slot 3, and it's uh, zero off Cranberry Road, assesses maps. 125 lot 9-C and Carver Mass to allow a large scale ground mounted solar photovoltaic installation. This, uh, the project includes a proposed solar array and energy storage facility in accordance with the bylaw in a residential agricultural district. More paper. More paper. <laughs> we like paper. I, I thought the, the smaller one would be better. Use some of those streets. <laughs> so we did go on a, a site visit. Was it last week? I believe the and site visit was on January sixteenth. Yeah, it was this year, two thousand and nine. It was this year, <laughs> <laughs> not and so long ago. Yeah, and I remember we went out there. And um, uh, we uh, went off of Cranberry Road. We went up a long driveway uh, to where the uh, solar array is proposed to be. It's in a sand pit area. Um, there were large, th there was uh, large piles of dirt, and, and there was some uh, bricks dumped there, and there was some boulders, and 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 the bank, uh, uh, the sandy bank was sort of irregular. Um, those are the things that I saw out there, and and uh, it seemed like the solar array was going to be in the sand pit area. There wasn't going to be much cutting of trees out there. <coughs> we did visit uh, some of the uh, neighbor neighboring houses uh, off of Cranberry Road, and um, we saw that uh, really couldn't view any of that sand pit area off of Cranberry Road. And uh, then we went to uh, Pine Ridge. Wait, and so when you were saying, I think you mean Priscilla Mullins Drive. When we oh, it's a Priscilla it. Mullins. Yeah, the and then Cranberry Road. was the Cranberry uh, is the main uh, one that you can see okay. from for a while. But Priscilla Mullins. Oh, okay, is that's we right. Went to the, yeah, the woman's house. yeah, you could. You, you're going to be able to see it from Cranberry Road, but we'll discuss that. Uh, Priscilla Mullins is the subdivision road that we went off of. And we did go to the lady, uh, her name was Helga, was here. I don't know if she's here tonight or not. But we did go, and she gave us a tour through her backyard. And um, and it, it, you really couldn't see anything out there. She did complain, though, uh, not complain, but she did note that over the years, because of that bank was sandy and open the way it is, that um, every time there was a, a heavy wind, that you know, there'd be a lot of uh, sand blowing around in the neighborhood. So, uh, so she was happy to think that that something was going to be done out there to stabilize the bank. So we did, and then we did go to uh, uh, Pine Ridge, and we viewed it from Pine Ridge, uh, from the parking lot out there. And uh, there was a machine that that had been parked, uh, excavating machine that was like 24 feet high out there, uh, where the field was going to be. Oh, it, where it's proposed to be, and um, the machine was was difficult to, to see from from the parking lot. For me, it was anyway. So we can talk about that. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, there were a couple of planning board uh, members that didn't make it, but uh, most of the planning board uh, was there, I think. So I guess can take it from here. Thank you. For the record, Sarah Stearns from Beals and Thomas, Zach Park is from Borrego Solar, and Richard Serkey, project attorney, um, here to represent the project at 196 Tremont Street. Um, <clears throat> it was a nice summary, uh, Mr. No. Chairman. Thank you. Um, at this point, um, this is our second planning board hearing. Um, the 
applicant has conducted um, two or three meetings with the um, citizens that live in the Pine Ridge Way neighborhood to discuss um, potential screening options. Um, we had site visits with both this board and the Conservation Commission, and we've had a Conservation Commission hearing as well. Um, we had a technical review committee meeting with um, municipal staff to incorporate any comments from department heads and, um, as promised, <laughs> have revised plans for you this evening. Um, the revisions to the plan set are very minor in nature, and really we went over them um, at, at our opening hearing two weeks ago, and it was primarily um, revising the emergency access roads and relocating the pad for the inverter and battery storage from the Cranberry Road southern end of the project to the center of the array, similar to the Hammond Street project that we just saw. So it's more engulfed in the midst of the project. Um, so those and a couple of other minor stormwater management changes have been added, updated, submitted to um, the planning director and also Fuss and O'Neill for their review. Um, and as Mr. Sinclair noted at our last meeting, it was a tight turnaround time-wise, but we did it. Um, I did get an email tonight um, as I entered town hall from Andy Glines at Fuss and O'Neill saying the majority of their uh, comments have been addressed and anything remaining, though minor, could be uh, conditioned appropriately. And those are things, um, I sort of just skimmed the letter, but just some minor um, notes on the plan type comments. So um, revised stormwater report and plans have been reviewed by them and they are on file now with, with Stephen um, as well as our uh, review letter. Um, which also, similarly to what we did on the past two projects, incorporates Carver Fire comments and edits as well. So, um, and that, um, coupled with working with the residents in the area, um, which I believe Zach can talk about it in a little bit more detail, is an ongoing conversation, but I think we have a good feel for um, what we are presenting in terms of um, potential screening options and have added that to the plans that you have in front of you as well. And we can kind of look at that in more detail. I know that Zach has some um, Google Earth images and some photographs that we'd like to share with you tonight as well, particularly for those of you who haven't, who weren't able to join us in the site visit um, or haven't been to the site. I think these would be particularly helpful to visualize the layout and what's out there. And just, I want to reiterate too that um, this is a solar project that's proposed solely within the footprint of a previously disturbed area. It's agricultural land um, that has been mined over the years for sand and gravel um, by 80 Makepeace. Um, the footprint of the site is there. A large part of the site work, getting it to a level, um, a level topography appropriate for the site has largely been done. Um, so there's not much site work left to do. The embankment, as you see it now, is essentially where it's going to be. Um, it needs to be graded a little bit just for stability and for planting, but for the most part, it's going to look very similar to how it is today in terms of the um, topography out there. No part of the solar array is proposed on the cranberry bogs. It's proposed on the adjacent upland only. Um, and. Um, as Mr. Chairman said, we did walk the site with the entirety of the site itself and also the adjacent neighborhood to the east, which is Bradford Boulevard and a small piece of Priscilla Mullins Ave, or Priscilla Mullins Way, and also then drove around via Cranberry Road to the Pine Ridge Way neighborhood and looked at basically where that yellow line shoots across in, in the image on the screen. Um, to look at the viewshed from that neighborhood as well. So I think that was a valuable um, exercise to do with the board. Um, I think it certainly um, helps to be on site and see things in person, if at all possible, to, to really um, encapsulate what's out there. So we're happy to answer any questions. And Zach, if you want to talk about your photographs. Sure. So the board had requested me some photographs of the site as well as an existing site to show the sight line angle. We talked a lot about viewing the side of the array as opposed to the front of the array. 
and also the board requ require, uh, requested some pictures of the fence that we were proposing. Um, if you recall, instead of doing a standard chain link fence, we proposed doing a vinyl dipped chain link fence to kind of add a little bit of natural color to the array, maybe take down some of the industrial look, the, the silver galvanized steel look. So after talking with the residents of Pine Ridge Way, um, their preference was for the standard chain link vinyl dipped brown and no privacy slats. I think I know we the board talked about it. We went back and forth a little bit. The general thought is a, a solid screen may actually draw your eye a bit more than kind of a natural a natural buffer. In front of that fence, you'll see the new plans. We squeezed the site a little bit, pushing some of our racks away from the wetland uh, bank, which is the um, which is the cranberry bogs. That was one of the requests of the conservation commission. And in that five foot gap that we created, we placed um, eight sections for plantings. These are going to be three to five foot, three to five quantity clusters of an appropriate tree or bush that will grow out there and the intent is that it'll help break up perhaps a, a fence line that might jump out a little bit. We thought a, a strict row of trees would first be very challenging to plant and have grow out there. We, we refer to it as the Arctic tundra on our site walk and that's what it's going to be for the next couple months. So finding a plant species that will really thrive out there is something that is important to me and not creating that straight line look of trees that unnatural look of trees was important as well. So you'll see those plantings that were added and happy to take the board through a couple a very quick presentation unless you guys have any questions first. No, go ahead and proceed please. Exactly. Alright, so the first is standing at the exact same place looking back at the array you'll see that's the disturbed area you'll see the bank which goes back and you'll see the pine trees which will remain and not be cleared and there's the excavator so the next picture is from Pine Ridge Way looking across the bogs and you can see there's a very I can't walk around there anymore the excavator is right so very, very small, 3,000 feet is, is a long distance. Um, it's just kind of looking a picture of really nothing right now, so it's hard to get any perspective for what it is. So what I did is I visited the Ward Street solar project that Borrego developed and constructed in 2017. Um, this is satellite image. You can see the system doesn't show to be totally built here, but I assure you it is. Um, the first picture I took, and instead of um, getting 3,000 feet away, I was able to get about 1,300 feet away, so a little less than a third, we'll call it two and a half times uh, closer. So the first picture is standing right here, looking at the side of the array. So this is the image if you were, call it 30 or 40 feet away. This is the side image of the panels, about nine and a half, eight to 10 feet, depending on the grade, high. 25 degree tilt and then that is a six foot high galvanized steel fence with a, a galvanized chain link fence excuse me with a foot of barbed wire on top so the image of this array at what was it and that's 
spot over there looking out across the bogs. About 1,300 feet. And you could just barely see the array by the angle I was sitting at. There's a little bit of a glow up to the top right. And so imagine this picture two and a half times further away will be what the Pine Ridge Way uh, neighborhood will potentially be looking at. Any questions on these before I start getting to the fence? <coughs> Conceptually, you guys understand what I try to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the fence, this is just the standard detail. I couldn't find an eight foot fence. This is a six foot detail or an extremely tall person. Um, but this is what the manufacturer shows as their final dipped chain link. It's basically the exact same thing as every chain link fence you've ever seen, just brown. Here's an image of a four foot version. Um, I picked this image because it's at a, a baseball field and with the kind of varying ground covers, some grass, some cranberry bogs, some dirt, you guys can see that that, that brown is going to do quite nicely, especially over that elongated distance. And then this was a picture of what the privacy slats would look like. And I think this picture, seeing that really solid color, um, we had agreed would be more of a detriment to the viewshed than not. So your plans show a eight foot brown dip vinyl with privacy slats. We're gonna strike the privacy slats in our final, final version of the drawing. That's all I have. Do you have pictures of the kind of trees or bushes that you would anticipate planting? No, we, I, we indicated some pretty generic plantings and the thought would be we'd be conditioned to work with a local landscaper or landscape architect to select plants that would not only grow but thrive in these type of conditions. We didn't want to overly um, constrain ourselves with a specific type of, of tree or plant that we'd go there. It's I very, would just yeah. I would just add that the only note that's specified on the plan is that they be native. Thank you. Because in my opinion, there's a, the people from Pine Ridge have a pretty solid view, and then there's a couple of butters on Cranberry Road. I know 8 Cranberry has quite the view from that backyard, and I believe 6 does too, but then more so when you're driving down Tremont Street and Cranberry Road, you see this for, gosh, the better part of a minute. So um, it's it's pretty important that the area blend in with, I think, some plantings that are going to be more than just, you know, small bushes on both the, the western and southern sides. Well, the southern side will be completely enclosed. You can see that tree line will exist, but I, I do agree with you, the, the west side is what we're trying to work on. The southwestern corner, the part, you can see it when you're driving on Cranberry Road and you're looking to the left for like I don't know, the better part of a third of a mile, you can see it and the panels will be facing more that way than they will to Pine Ridge. So I okay. think it's, it's really important to have a natural screening down there that blends into the area because the panels will be more visible. Yeah, I think that's exactly our tent, intent is to have a natural screening that helps the, the system blend in, not exactly hide it completely. I think you get in that challenge of building a, a monster wall around this thing, it's gonna take everyone's eyes a lot a lot more aggressively. So yeah, we're, we're looking to strike that right balance with, um, I don't want to call it random, but we'll call it non-standard planting, so it's more natural looking, and then the, the brown fence. I would just like to have seen examples of the native trees. We're happy to listen to what you guys have to hear about recommendations from the board on, on the native trees, or we can condition that certainly to have, uh, have us provide a landscaping plan when we get there. I think it's it's going to be a very, very challenging site to landscape because of the, the conditions out there, especially in the winter. So we want to make sure we find something that, like Sarah said, is native and is going to, is going to grow well in, a, in an area that has extremely low organics and very rough temperatures and wind. Mm -hmm. But point, point well taken. Um, I, I would add one other thing is that what you notice from, if you want to go back to the picture from Pine Ridge, because um, it's very similar to the view from Tremont Street. The biggest thing that is noticeable, and I drive this street every day myself, is the rear slope that you see that light, bright sand color. That, as part of the planting plan, is proposed to be seeded. So that whole slope, as it looks today, will blend 
so much more naturally with the um, tree line above um, and that's really the goal and I personally think again as someone who drives the street every single day that's where your eye is drawn to at this distance and e even more so than any plantings that are going to be so much lower um, closer to bog elevation um, I think that's really the thing that I'm most excited for personally <laughs> um, to see that slope green and brown and naturalized more so than than what it looks like today and what it has looked like for the past however many years that the site has been active. So just wanted to make sure that that was pointed out as well. There's one large loam pile on site right here. And over the years of sitting there, there's just got some kind of regeneration of some, some plant species and whatnot, even in grasses and kind of bushes and weeds growing. But you can see that color from the naked eye at this, at this distance is going to blend in almost perfectly to the, to the existing pine forest line. So that the intent would be that the entire bank throughout the entire view shed would look exactly like that color, which will blend very, very smoothly into the pine forest. And one of the things we initially talked about um, with, with amongst ourselves and with the board and with the um, Pine Ridge folks, I think our instinct was to go with green, um, green fencing, green privacy slats. And then we went out there in January and realized that would be the only green thing out there this time of year, and that would really draw your eye to it unnecessarily. So that's how we kind of got to the brown, even though brown sounds kind of sad and boring. <laughs> but I think it does, um, I think it is the best for this particular scenario um, and will be useful throughout the year. And finally, I know there's members of the Pine Ridge um, neighborhood here but as Sarah said at the outset, I met informally with a group prior to the Conservation Commission site walk in mid-December, and then again formally this afternoon with the trustees, and I have reviewed these changes with them with their blessing, and we are also going to work with them on a few other items that if there is an impact post-construction, that there will be some available remedies for them. Any uh, comment, uh, other comments from the board members? Oh, at the site visit, you had said there was just going to be the one pole coming across Cranberry Road and then it'd go <coughs> directly underground. Is that set in stone? There's not going to be any additional poles going down the way? Everything will be underground. The, the medium voltage mm -hmm. run from the array to the interconnection point, there'll be an equipment pad with the meters and the reclosers and the utility required equipment. Then it'll go up a riser pole and jump the street to connect to the existing pole. If you can think of the, the other sites around town that have three or four poles all kind of up tight together, we call those a pole farm. That equipment is necessary, but it's not always necessary to put it in the air. So it'll be on the ground with the exception of the one riser pole. Because at the, the Ward Street site, there are That's right. yellow bollards in the ground. And um, if they were going to happen here, I would have liked to have seen a more natural color. But if nothing's going to have bollards around it, then that's a moot point. No, there will be, actually. Those bollards are not for the equipment, per se. Those bollards are for the pull boxes for mm -hmm. a long underground trench. You need yeah. to break it up in case it ever needs to be serviced. Mm -hmm. So there, there will be trenches, or excuse me, there will be um, pull boxes at appropriate intervals. Mm -hmm. So it's an excellent comment. If you'd like us not to pick yellow, then we can do those brown as well. Yeah, I've heard comments from people about that project, so it would great. be great to see them kind of blend in more. No, that's the first I've heard, so yeah. very easy to order the right color. And the intent of those bollards is to <coughs> protect the pull boxes from a mm -hmm. plow vehicle as it goes sure. through. But yeah, that's very easy. Different color with a reflector achieves yeah, the I same thing. Yeah, I think that that type of detail is a little bit more than we provide at the planning level, but I think um, if you guys want to put that in the conditions that, that we do that, I'd be more Came up, happy. thought I'd ask. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Did you ever get a chance to speak to Kevin about the I did not. things out there? I did not. No, Kevin, at the at the planning board site walk and the TRC, I think you were assigned <laughs> to help <laughs> us pick something that will survive out there. And as I mentioned to Jen, um, in the conditions, just either whether we come back with a landscaping plan later or right into the conditions, what to use, I think we'd, we'd love your opinion on behalf right. of the board. And if you would like to go out there and experience it firsthand, <laughs> we'd be happy to Absolutely. accompany well, you. I know um, prior to the last time we met, we did talk about 
you know the positioning of some of those areas so that um, I believe they were going to be at the angle of the structure so it, it would break it up a little bit and it wouldn't look exactly like a line right yep okay. yeah that was the intent of the, the staggered and the groupings of plantings instead of the I guess the the closest look is the the Wareham project, the Eversource project behind <coughs> behind the shopping mall on Tony on Toby Road, is probably quite literally a hundred Christmas trees, all four feet high, <coughs> touching each other with the bottom branches. So that was the type of look we wanted to avoid. Any other questions by planning board members before? I go out to the public, people. Oh, yeah. um, excuse me. I think that's great that you decided to put a few trees, and uh, there's some scrub pines that are growing in that sand pit now, and I think as natural as you go, it's going to blend in nicely, and they'll have a chance for survival, too. Totally. That's yeah. exactly what the... A few the short cedars are in there, and some scrub pines, and yep. I don't think you have to go crazy to keep it looking, you know, natural. So great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, seeing so you no know, uh, other questions by board members, uh, before I go on, um, I don't know, maybe uh, if, if you could arrange a time, would you have uh, time available to go out to the site just to take a look and see what kind of plantings there sure. you could place out there? I don't know if uh, Zach Do or Sarah. Do I make that through with both of you guys? Yeah, whatever, whatever time's okay. convenient, I'm sure one of me or Sarah could. could All right, so I'll make sure that you get my number before we leave tonight. Great. All right, I'll open this up. Uh, does uh, anybody out in the audience have any questions or concerns? And if you do, if you do, we have a microphone. We've got this one here, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I mean, last time we had a microphone and a nice, comfortable <laughs> chair to sit in, too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brenda Johnson, 28 Pine Ridge Way, and also a trustee. We did meet with Zach today, and we had a very nice conversation with him. They've been great to work with. They've listened to our concerns and addressed them all, and we really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any uh, questions? Oh. Seeing none. My thoughts are to close the public hearing this evening. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Second that. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, if we could have the uh, conditions written up and we'll approve the conditions at our next meeting. Yes, sir. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, planning board member notes. Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, just a little information for the board um, on some of the progress that the Water District and also the RDA is working on. We're working on a joint meeting between the two boards with the Route 44 Development Group uh, to give us an update on um, the status of where the project is, the status of where the ENI is, and also the um, the MEPA process. Um, 
that meeting we're hoping to set for next month sometime working with two different boards trying to get that together and trying to schedule that is a little challenging at times because everybody's pretty busy uh, the developer uh, Route 44 is very accommodating they, they're going to accommodate and come in and meet us at that hoping to have a pretty good um, conversation with them um, it'll be just the two boards but it'll be open to the public so I wanted to get that out there and um, hopefully we'll be able to bring some information to the public on where exactly they stand um, through that process um, this town hasn't gone through that process before so I think it's important that we uh, we get an update so I'll, I'll keep reminding you guys and bringing that up and I'll make sure that you guys are informed of when that's going to happen okay good thank you again I'd be interested to uh, take a walk out see what's been done anyone else have any other comments okay. all right so we'll go to the planning director Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to thank everyone for their time tonight. I think it was a great job team uh, getting through an otherwise difficult agenda. Uh, contained in your packets at the top of the packet was a copy of the state ethics requirements. I'm sure many of you who have served in other capacities have already done this. But if you haven't yet done it, if you could please take a look at it, sign the acknowledgement. I'd be glad to take it to the clerk on your behalf. But please also be aware of the, um, the, uh, the, the test that we have to take as well. And aside from that, Mr. Chairman, over here to my right, next to uh, Susan Hannon, is a copy of the ANRs that were approved tonight, as well as the endorsement mylar for the uh, Patriot Pines subdivision. So, if, if before the members depart this evening, if I could, if I could gain your signature on those documents, that would be very.